Welcome to the Rooted Truth program. Today we're going to talk about light for the Christian's path. The parable of the revealed light. It is in Luke chapter 8, verses 16 to 18. Luke chapter 8, verses 16 to 18. It says, No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel, or puts it under a bed, but sets it up on a lampstand, that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Therefore take heed how you hear, for whoever has, to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken from him. So we see that Jesus here gives us a parable, and many parables that Jesus gives us, he goes on to explain it to his disciples. For this parable, in Luke, he does not go on to explain it. So we're going to derive some some meaning from this parable on how we can use it in our life today. So we see that a few important things are mentioned in this parable. One, he mentions a lamp. He mentions a lampstand. Those who enter and the light. We see that the lamp has been set up on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. And we're going to, you know, to, to get some interpretation from, from the parable uh, through my study. Uh, you know, I have related some objects to, to what can happen in our life. So what is the lamp? So Psalm 119 verses 105, Psalms 119 and verses 105 says, Your word is the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. I'll repeat that. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So we see here that the word of God is a lamp. And the psalmist also says that the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet. So why feet? Why not eyes? Because, you know, human sense of, uh, of, of, of sight is coordinated with eyes. But the psalmist says, your word is a lamp unto my feet. You know, we walk... This Christian journey, you know, the day we, you know, we put our faith in Christ, you know, as our Lord, we start a journey, this journey called the Christian journey. It is a spiritual journey. And we know that the word tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Therefore, I think this is why the psalm says, you know, the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet. This feet, he's, he's thinking of, of this spiritual journey, the spiritual walk with Christ and that's why it says the word of God, which is the lamp, is the light unto his feet and not for the eyes. So we've established the word of God is the lamp unto our feet. The word of God is the lamp unto our faith. The word of God is the lamp unto our walk, this Christian walk. So just as we use our feet to move forward, to move backwards, sideways, to stagnate and stand somewhere, we can also move in all directions in our faith. We can go forward by growing in the faith. We can go backwards by giving up on attendance of the faith. We can also stagnate. We can stop growing. Um, we can you know, be the same today and tomorrow because we're not growing. And we can also move sideways. We can get distracted by things. Uh, we have an example in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. The writer rebukes the listeners that although they ought to be as teachers feeding on solid food, you know, they were still feeding on milk, needing to be taught the first principles of the oracles of God. So we see the writer here is disappointed with his listeners, telling them, hey, I expected you to have moved forward in your path, in, in the Christian path, in knowing God, but you have stagnated. So if the word of God is the lamp, what then is the lampstand? Remember the parable said, no one lights a lamp and hides it under a bed, but sets it, up, sets it up on a lampstand. So what is a lampstand? So if the word of God is a lamp, then the lampstand must be the person, the Christian, the believer. Verse 16 says, No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel, or puts it under a bed, but sets it up on a lampstand. Christians are the lampstands on whom the lamp is set. Christians are the are the lampstands on whom the word of God is set. The word of God is set in our hearts. And we are the lampstands. Uh, 
in Psalm in Psalm one one on one on nineteen one nineteen the, the the same Psalm we read earlier, we saw that the word of God is also something else. It is a light into my path. So you know we said we're gonna be you know deriving some some explanations from these some of these objects in this parable, but the the psalmist says here in chapter one hundred and nineteen and verses one of five that. The word of God is also a light into our path. So we already talked about this Christian journey. You get saved when you're nine. You get saved when you're 40. And what if God has given you 40 more years to live? You have these 40 years or 45 or 60 years to walk this walk of the Christian life. This is the Christian path. The psalmist says, the word of God is a light into my path. So what is the Christian path? The answer we've already uh, I mentioned it is a walk, but the Christian path is is you know is a total submission to Jesus Christ as our master. That's the path we walk. We walk every day submitting to Christ, submitting to his commandments, submitting to his will. So that's our path. So the word of God is a lamp unto our feet, walking on this total on this on this path of total submission to Christ. The word of God is a light to the Christian path. That is one of the importances of having the word of God set in your heart. It lights up the path that you're walking on, the Christian path. So God has provided the light for the Christian on this path. The word of God in a Christian lights up and uh, lights up, lights up his way and shines on the Christian's path. Remember, the Christian's path involves total submission to Christ. Most people will try to avoid walking on dark alleys at night. You know, they try to look for a street that is well lit. Uh, cities and towns spent loads of money, you know, on, on their infrastructure departments, you know, trying to, to make sure that their streets are well lit, you know, for security of the people. The Christian path of total submission is also not neglected. It's not a dark alley. Jesus, God, has provided us a light, and that light is, is his word. He wants us to walk by day and not by night. He wants us to be to be guided. So, the lamp serves here a purpose of lighting up the Christian's path, lighting up your walk. And that is his word that he's given us, the written word that he has given us. However, it is our responsibility individually as a Christian to set that light in your heart. You see, God has given you the light. You are the lampstand. The, the parable says no one lights a lamp and hides it on a bed. So it is your responsibility as a Christian to set that lamp on the lampstand, which is you. Um, and so if, a few questions here. You now, have you set the lamp on the lampstand? Is the word of God set up in your heart? How does the word of God light up your Christian walk? Is the word of God the lamp unto your feet in the, in the marketplace of ideas? Does the word of God guide your thoughts? Does the word of God guide your every decision that you make in your life? Does the word of God light up your path? So you can answer those questions yourself. One of the great uh, value of setting up the light of the word of God in your heart is that by that light, you can see everything else. It's like seeing the whole world through the spectrum of the word of God. So, the word of God, by that light, you can see everything clearly. You can see culture through the word of God. You can see you can see everything. When culture around us is changing, you are seeing everything through the light of the word of God. So to you, there is not a lot of change because you have this constant word of God that's going on in your heart. See, when an enemy attacks along the way, on, you know, on, on, along the way, you can see him a mile off because the light of Jesus Christ is already shining in your in your in your life. You know, you can see temptations way off. You you, you can see you, you you can see the devil trying to attack way off because your path is well lit. Unlike if your path is dark and, and, and you know yeah. someone is trying to attack, you don't know. You know, you, you you just don't know what is coming from the dark. But when your path is well lit. You can see what is coming straight ahead. So when your path is lit, you can size up the enemy. And, you know, the Bible tells us that sometimes we'll have to stand and flee uh, and fight. And other times we'll have to, to flee. 
Sometimes we'll have to stand and fight. Sometimes we'll have to flee. When you have the light of Jesus Christ shining in your life, when you've set up that lamp on its rightful lampstand, which is your heart, you'll be able to make that decision. Flee or fight. Because if you don't have that light set up in you, you may flee from, from something you shouldn't, you shouldn't flee from. You, should, you, you, you may flee from something you, sh- you should actually stand and fight. And then you could also make a bold uh, move to, to, to stand and fight from something you should flee. Take this as an example. You know, you're walking on a dark alley and then you, you see some shadowy figure coming your way and you hear some noises in the bushes. Because you don't have a light, it's dark, you make, you make, a, you make a decision. You know, you make, make a decision to, to run away and, you know, realize you ran away from a cat that, that is lost, you know, f- you know, looking for its way to go home. Or you could make a bold decision to move ahead and then you fall in the hands of robbers. So this analogy is, can apply to our lives. When you don't have the, the light of God shining in your life, when you don't have that word guiding your every step, you're bound to make unguided decision. You're bound to stand and try to fight sin that you should be fleeing from. And sometimes, you, you know, you're, you're fleeing from temptations that God is like, I've given you the, the strength, I've given you the courage to go through that. And to no surprise, you know, we've gotten mugged every day. We've gotten mugged every day, we've fallen in all sorts of troubles just because we've not said the word of God in our hearts. We have been tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, and by deceitful schemes. You know, what is relevant today? Is it walkism? You will see the Christian going that way. What is relevant today? Is it progressive Christianity? You see the Christian going that way. What is relevant today? Is it new age? Is it prosperity gospel? You see the Christians following. It's because we have not set up the light of God in our hearts. We are being swept away by every doctrine of you know wind of doctrine by every human cunning and, and deceptive scheme. You know, culture is redefining truth for us and Christians are going with it. Christians are agreeing with it because we do not have the light for ourselves. If you don't have a light in your heart, you're gonna try to walk you know, alongside others, you know, trying to, to, to walk along their light. Their light may not be the word of God. That's the other point. When you set up the lamp on the lampstand, you set up the word of God. Your word is a lamp into my feet. You don't set up anything else. You set up the word of God in your heart. So the second value of having the word of God in your heart, the second purpose of setting up the lampstand, the lamp on the lampstand, is that by that light others may see. You see, the parable gives us another reason why the lamp should be set up on the lampstand. It says in Luke chapter 8, verse eight, uh, verse 16, I'm going to read it again. It says, No one when he has lit a lamp covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it up on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. See, that's the, uh, the second purpose. That those, that those who enter may see the light. So who are the those that enter? And where do they enter to? You know, for many of us, you know, in our everyday lives, at work, at school, even at home, you know, our lives involve interactions with non-believers. These are our colleagues, they are our friends, they are our spouses, our children, our parents, our relatives, name it. This is the those who enter. And where do they enter? They enter our lives. You see, the parable said that those who enter may see the light. You set up the lamp on the lampstand, not just for, for your benefit, not just for you to see where you're going, but also for those who enter to see the light. So, what do other people see? What do the, those see when they enter your life? What do they see when they enter your circles? Do they see the light of God, the light of the word of God? Do they see the lamp set up on the lampstand? Do they see the word of God set up in your heart? Or do they see you? You know, that's a question to ponder on. Do they see the word of God set up in your heart? Or do they see you? You know, Luke chapter 5 verse 16 says this. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So they see your good works, they see your light that is so shining, and they glorify your Father in heaven. The light you're bearing is not your light. It's so shining that when others see it, they glorify your Father in heaven. So if people enter your life and all they can see is you, if the those who enter enter your life and all they can see is you, you better put the light of the word of God back on the lampstand. Because you shouldn't be the one on the lampstand. You are the lamps, you are the lampstand. You can't put yourself on the lampstand. You are supposed to put a lamp. We've seen that that lamp is the word of God. If all that those who enter your life that they can see is you, put the word of God in its rightful place. It is possible that as a Christian, you could be the only light, you could be the only lampstand that these non-believers, your friends, your family, your neighbors see. Yep. Someone put it this way. You could be the only Bible they've ever read. What kind of light are you shining that those who enter are seeing? For many years in America, it was the case that the light that others saw from Christians, the light that shone off from Christians, that's the light that guided the law of the land. That's the land. That's the law. That that's the light that guided the you know the morals of society. That's the light that guided public discourse. But that has changed quickly, and it's no it's not the case. So now it's the darkness from others that is kind of influencing the church. That is kind of guiding the church war to us war to us individually war to us as a church if we let the the darkness that we are supposed to influence be the one now influencing us as a church see when you're the only person when you're the only person walking on a dark alley and you have a flashlight you know something is going to happen People are going to come and walking around you. You know, they're going to come walking along you because you are the only person with the light. And that's what used to happen in this country. And all other countries looked at America, sending out evangelists in the world to go in all corners of the world to take the gospel of Jesus Christ. But now that's not what is happening. It could be in your own life. You know? There's a time you had the light of Jesus Christ shining in you and in and, and, and your neighbors saw that and your, and your friends saw that and, and your parents saw that. But now it has dimmed out. And, and, and no one is entering your life because you don't have light. And no one would, you know, would want to come you know, along with you if, if you don't have light. If you're as dark, if you're walking in darkness as they are, why would they be attracted to you? But, you see, when your light becomes darkness, it becomes of the case, it becomes the case of, of, of the blind leading the blind. So, you know, if, 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 if your light that you had now is dark, even the people who are following you are going to walk away because, you know, you all don't know where you're going. So what kind of light are you shining to those who enter your life? It's a question to think about. We have been clearly instructed not to cover up the light. This is for our own sake, but for the sake of those who enter our lives, those who enter, those who enter by seeing the light. And, and what is causing us to cover up the light of God, the light of the word of God? If you think about it in your life, what is it? You know, is it niceness? Yes, niceness. You know, Christians, we have a niceness problem. We have bought into the idea that God has called us to be nice and, and to the extent that some Christians are trying to be nicer than our Lord. You see, our Lord gives us a, a, a commandment. For example, marriage. And he says, hey, marriage is between one man and one woman. And you'll find a nicer Christian who wants to be nice, who wants to, 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 you know, to, to appeal to, to, you know, to, to the non-believers without you know, bringing the gospel of repentance and tell them, well, you know, love is love. And, 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 and we have our church. We have this colorful flag out there. You know, you're welcome. Welcoming them into the church of Christ without telling them that they'll have to repent of their sin. You know, many Christians are promoting inclusiveness without holiness. Inclusivity without holiness. Because 
We want to be nice. You know? Is it the fear of being offensive to people? You know, you, you tell people Jesus said this exclusive statement. He is the only way, he's the truth and the life. No one can get to the Father except him. Someone will tell you, oh, that's so offensive. What about this other God? What about this other religion? And you'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, that's so offensive. I'm not going to talk about it. Is that the fear of, of being offensive? Is it what is causing us to cover up the light that we're supposed to so shine? The light that we're not supposed to put under a, a vessel or under a bed? Is it the fear of standing out? Or being the odd man out? Or being the outcast? See, one will say, you know, my, shining my light to others is, it creates a lot of attention on me. And I don't want attention. I'm a very private person. You know, representing the word of God against the culture puts me in the spotlight against my family, my friends, my work colleagues. And, you know, I, I would rather... I'd rather be a closeted Christian. I'd rather cover up. You know, I'll still love the Lord in the secret. I'll praise Him. I'll I'll, I'll do the things He requires of me. But I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak out. I'm not gonna represent. You know. You know, as Christians, we have not been called to be antagonistic. No. There is no command of our Lord that tells us to go be antagonistic against unbelievers. But we are also told not to hide our light. Not to hide from darkness. We are supposed to, to walk in the light. You see, when you are walking in the light, you don't have to force it. Darkness will flee. You know, you put on your light and walk. Darkness is going to flee. You know, Francis of Assisi once said that preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. If necessary, use words. Which means when you set up your light and go your way, go to work, you know, sit around with family members at the dinner table, your light is going to shine even without you saying things because people are going to see your life. They're going to see God moving in your life. You may not need to say words. You know, when the light is shining, it's so shining to others. It's not your job to force others to see it. The Bible says it's so shining. Your job is to set it up on the on, on, on the lampstand. Set the word of God in your heart. Let it guide your decisions. Let it guide your thoughts. Let people know, you know, before he makes a decision, he's going to pray about it. He's going to seek the Lord about it. He's not going to deviate from what the Bible teaches. And when they see that, they will know that they can't compromise. You know, you can't compromise on, you know, on your faith. You can't compromise on the word that is in your heart. Do not apologize for upholding the word of God. Do not apologize for putting this lamp in its rightful place. You know, and do not cover up the word of God. Do not cover up the word of God. We've not told. We've told. We've been told to set it up on a lampstand. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed. That is verse seventeen. Or anything hidden that will not be made known and come to light. See, wherever there is light, darkness flees. We've already seen that. And as people enter your life, the light of the word of God that is set up in your heart will shine on their sin and darkness. So that anything that has been hidden to them, anything that has been hidden from other people, anything they're thinking they're doing a good job of hiding, is going to come to light. And when that happens, one of two things is going to happen. One, there's going to be a conviction in their heart that leads to repentance. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Or there's going to be a condemnation that leads to death. And that's the work of the devil. You see, if you want to know how dark anything was, you step in the light. And, and for those of us that are believers, we know that. Because we once walked in the darkness. I mean, we know what we used to to do the things we used to think about, the words we used to say before Christ became our Lord. So we know how dark it was, but you can only see how dark it was because now you're in the light, because now you're walking in the light. You know, we are people of faith because, because you know, we've had the word of God and that word of God lights it up every day in our lives. So, you want to know how dark anything was? You step in the light. 
you know verse 18 verse 18 says take heed how you hear take heed how you hear why why hear hear what romans chapter 10 verse 17 says this faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god we are people of faith because we've heard and believed the word of god which is the power of god unto salvation why do we hear the word of god remember we already learned that the word of god is a light that guides our path but then he says take heed how you hear hearing the word of god is what keeps up our lights it's what keeps the lights on if we say it in that way cities and towns like i told you before they have departments they drive around the town the whole day looking for streets with broken lights to fix them spend loads of money doing this god has spent his best he has sent his son jesus christ that's what god has done to show us the light to give us the light that we can set it up in our hearts a christian who does not read and hear the word of god is a christian who's walking on a dark alley of his christian path as a christian who has dimmed out the light of the word of god in his heart on a day like this you know you you he listen to this program and in in you've opened up the bible and and you've read the word of jesus christ and that's good and when next are you going to hear the word when next are you going to open the bible when next are you going to listen to scripture Moving forward in your spiritual growth means continuing continually listening to the word of God means listening to the word of God reading the word of God meditating on the word of God take heed how you hear in continuing on verse 18 it says for whoever has to him more will be given for whoever has to him more will be given Whoever has what whoever has the word of god growing in their heart whoever has this light whoever has this lamp in his rightful place to such a person more will be given whoever does not have their light set up on their hearts whoever has their light dimmed out whoever has their life light burning out that's not the person they're talking about here they're talking about the person who set up their light and it's on their heart it's not burning out it's not dimming out to that person more faith will be given to that person more knowledge of the word of god will be given because this person is actually studying the word of god you know to that person more discernment more wisdom will be given he will not be easily deceived because he studies the word of god continuing with verse 18 it says and whoever does not have even what he seems to have will be taken away from him the definition of of the word seem he says to give an impression of being something or having a particular quality so it's an impression of having something it's like it's an impression of of having something that we actually don't have so this is what verse 18 says again and whoever does not have even what he seems to have will be taken from him you know a christian who does not have the word of god in him even what he seems to have what he gives an impression of having you know that godliness that he seems to be left with after giving up on all many tenets of the faith even that will be taken from him and who is the one taking away you know in the in the parable of the sower jesus explains that the devil comes and takes away the word from people's hearts this is the seed by the wayside and then he also says the cares the riches and the pleasures of life come and choke the word so the devil will come and steal away the word from your heart the little you had after giving up on many many you know fundamentals of the gospel because you're nice because you're compromising with the world whatever you say you know this one I'll hold on to it even that the devil will come for it all the riches of the world or the cares or the pleasures they'll come and take it away from you and you see the devil is the kind of thief that comes not only to steal but to kill and destroy. So after taking away even the little that you have, it's going to come and steal 
if you are still it, but it's going to come to kill and destroy you, to destroy your life, to destroy your faith. So be vigilant. Be vigilant. So after the light of the word of God that you seem to have, that you seem to, you know, to have is also being taken, you're going to be destroyed. When you start dimming off parts of the word of God, you're left with no light at all. You're walking in the darkness. You know, it may seem like you have some light in you. It may seem like you give an impression of godliness. But even that will be taken from you. You know, and I believe I'll walk to a Christian and say, you know, your light is shining too bright. What you believe is so outdated, it's so offensive, it's so non-inclusive, it's so politically incorrect, blah, 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 blah. And instead of a Christian standing and saying, hey, I am a lampstand. I am not the lamp. I did not create the lamp. The lamp has its own creator. I just hold the lamp that it shines. You know what the Christian will say? The Christian will say, oh yeah, you know, you should be accepted in our, in our congregation. Which parts of the word of God do you want me to dim off? Which parts of the word of God do you want me to, to cut out? To compromise on? Is it God's teaching on marriage? Dim. Is it God's teaching on, 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 on holiness? Dim. Is it God's teaching on marriage? Is it God's teaching on gender? Is this God's teaching on, on the value of, of life, on morality? Dim, dim, dim. So if you're a Christian and you're dimming all those, what are you left with? Darkness. You're left with darkness. Remember, the scripture says that even the little you seem to have will be taken away from you. See, the Great Commission is not going to the whole world and make people feel accepted without repentance. It is not going to the whole world and, and be nice to people. The Great Commission is go into the whole world, making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus commanded. You see, if we present the gospel to people and we don't follow it up by teaching them everything, by teaching them everything that Jesus commanded, we are giving them a gospel that is not complete. We are selling them short. We are supposed to tell them about the new king, Jesus. Now, after they confess their sins and put their faith in Christ, we are supposed to command them in all things that Jesus has taught so that they can observe them. So if you're a Christian and you're an evangelist and, and, and you're speaking to your, to, your, to your friends about Christ, don't just tell them to, you know, to... To, to put their faith in Christ and that's it. Yes, do that. That's the first step. But then you have to take an extra step of, of telling them that now they have to observe all the commands that Jesus gave us so that they can also shine their light to others. And to a non-believer, this is what Romans 10, 9 says, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. After submitting to Jesus as your Lord, you know, you set up his word in your heart. Now you become a new lampstand. You have to set up the lamp in its place. And after that, you're going to so shine that even others, even other non-believers, are going to start entering your life. Let them see the light of Jesus Christ. With that word, let's meet again on our next program. May God bless you.